What? What if architecture could change the world? That's a very powerful question I do to myself every morning as an architect. In the last decades, cities and countries understood that architecture is a powerful instrument to change the urban context, the social and economic environment. Buildings like the Sydney, like the Opera in Sydney, or the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, the tallest tower in the world, or the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, are clear examples of this transformation and the power of architecture to change cities. These buildings became iconic landmarks and the new postcards of these cities. In our studio, we have the privilege to be part of this transformation and work in projects that are and will change their cities. Our design process is based on nature. Nature is our main inspiration, our inspiration spark. We strongly believe that architecture and nature is the wholeness. We strongly, strongly believe that the beauty lies in the fusion of nature with architecture. So at the end, the result is our leitmotif that nature becomes architecture. I want to share with you right now a few examples of our projects where you can see the power of the energy of nature that became architecture. Before that, I want to show you a few examples of the beauty of nature and how we can be inspired by it. This is a beautiful landscape of a rock. You can see how the wind formed the rocks and create infinity curves of possibilities. The same thing with a wave. When you can land, sit down in a beautiful sunset, you can see how the waves arrive to the coast in a very gentle way, and you can see the beautiful curves that arrive to the coast. Or in a glacier, you can see the crystallization of the water, and now this crystallization from a very small particular creates the whole glacier. Or even in a smaller detail, you can see the vegetation, and how even nature in this small particular element it's even beautiful. With this process, our intention, our objective, is to create an emotional response, an emotional approach, creating an inspiration and seducing the final user. When we received the call to design the British International School in Ghana, we were very excited. It was our first project in Ghana, so our, our inspiration was the rainbow. Why? Why the rainbow? When I went to see the land, I was surrounded by all these kids asking me and begging me, Archi architect, I want to see what my, my, my next school, how it would look like. So I was inspired by their smile, I was inspired by their vitality, their freshness and their happiness. And I thought to myself, how can I apply all this energy into the building? The result was the rainbow, as I said before. So the rainbow transformed this energy into the facade of the building, creating all this colorful and happiness. At the same time, the program of the school is kindergarten, primary, and secondary. So we create a building that behaves like a loop, where the kid is moving from one level to another one, following this progressive loop of education. But we were not satisfied yet. So we said, we want to create courtiers. Why courtiers? Because we want to create no boundaries because the exterior and the interior. And we want to introduce nature into the courtier so every kid will have constant relation with the exterior. We hope, we really hope that after the construction of this building that is now in construction, it will be the landmark of Accra and the most important thing will inspire the kids and the teachers that are working over there. Another example of how we apply our design process is a hotel in Algeria. Algeria is a very conservative country with a very conservative mindset. Very hard for architects, but we want to be creative. When I saw the site, I was impressed by the architecture. It seemed that everything was in black and white. There was no colors because the architecture was old, ancient, like a stop in time. So I sat on for a while in the slope of the land facing the sea, and I was impressed, I was overwhelmed with the strength and, the, and the, w the waves that were arriving to the coast. So the inspiration was the form of the wave moving and creating the building. The result was 
from the initial studies of the actual volume of the, of the hotel, we applied the strength and the form of the wave into the building. But as we were working in Algeria, we said we have to do something attached, attached to the country, something with some cultural identity. So we saw the monument of independence of Algeria. For them, it's very important. This is their independence. So we said, why not to merge both ideas, the wave and the monument? So we create a building that has the wave that faces the sea, where we located the rooms, and the other wave that is facing the city. In between the two waves, we create an open court here, full of palm trees, like an oasis, where this building will help us to behave in a very sustainable way. And at the same time, between the two waves, we located an Arabic pattern that behaves in a certain structure. So at the end, if you are a user of this hotel and you're trying to go to your room, you experience during the whole day how the ray lights filter through this structural pattern, and you can see all these beautiful and different shadows into the inside court here. Another project in Andorra, very small country in between France and Spain, well known to ski sports and summer sports, and well known by the geographic and all these mountains. We were asked to design three towers into the slope of a, la of a, of a, of a slope, of a land, of a landscape. So after visiting the site and after visiting some of the villages, we were, we were impressed and how, in a quite gentle way, the buildings were attached to the land, but we were inspired especially by how the human beings, they were cutting the mountains and leaving this beautiful landscape of the different stratum rock of the mountain. This is the story, ge ge geological story of Andorra. So after visiting the site and the land where we were supposed to build these three towers, and after requesting from our client, I want to do something like this, so I thought, I have to run away. I want to come back to Barcelona. So he said, no, no, stay, stay there. I said, OK, you want me to inspire you? You want me to seduce you? Let's do it together. So I said to him, OK, let's get this idea of the stratum rock and analyze how we can, from the stratum rock, create the facade of the building. So at the end, the stratum rock of this mountain becomes the facade of the building. Here you can see how the different levels of the building represents this stratum rock and the movement in different directions, vertical and horizontal. The most important thing for us in this project is that we didn't interfere in the landscape. We were, we, we were inspired by the landscape. Going to the other side of the world, Brazil, the actual World Cup host, we were, we were requested to design a luxury tower. The only demand from our client was, I want as much more light in my apartments. I said, don't worry, we will do it. So we thought, why not can we create something inspired in nature that could represent these maximum sun ray lights? We thought the sunflower is doing that. Let's use the sunflower. So we applied this concept into the envelope of the building and at the end arrive to a building that is gently moving and even dancing towards himself. But even that, we were not satisfied. So we said, let's make some kind of cultural identity into the building. So we went to see some shows with the, with the client, have a nice dinner, and we saw this show of the Bayanas. The Bayanas are the typical dancers from Brazil, from the north of Brazil, from Natal. So when, we were, when the Bayanas were dancing, I was impressed with my team, with the movement of the skirt. So I said, why not to merge the idea of the sunflower with the skirt? And the result? It's a building that is turning in a very gentle way, floor by floor, 15 degrees, and at the end creates this movement. And the most important thing for us as an architect, because architects, we have the ability to shape cities into the way we want to live in them and introduce nature into human life. So at the end, the most important thing is how a final user will feel in one of these balconies. He will feel like DiCaprio in Titanic, something like that. <laughs> so we wanted to create this kind of feeling. One smaller project here in Costa Brava, very near from Barcelona, but very challenged for us. Why? Because the client is a 73-year-old man, very conservative, not from Argelia, he's German, okay? but very conservative. Yeah? He's an hotelier, has a few hotels in Costa Brava, so he came to us and said, I want to do a new building for my kids, for my nephews, 
but they want to do the same as always. Why? People are scared. They want to stay in the comfort, comfort zone, and they are scared of move to the magic zone. So I said to him, Peter, listen, let's do something different. So I took a walk with him in a beautiful sunset day, and I, and I saw with him how the waves, they were arriving to the sea, and where they were coming back to, to the sea, they were leaving these kind of beautiful drawings into the sun. So I said to him, do you really want to do this? I know this is your hotel, but do you really want to do this? Why not we create a building that applies this kind of the movement of the waves into the facade? So this is the result. A building that is very functional, but in the facade has balconies that are playing with each other, moving, creating a very dynamic form, and playing like a pentagram of music. We are building this building, and we hope that Peter will be satisfied and happy to leave this building to his kids and nephews. Dubai. What an experience, Dubai. When I was there working, 2008, before the crisis, for us architects, Dubai was Alice in Wonderland. We were very creative. No rejections. No one was saying, you are crazy. What are you doing? Come back to your city. No, no, no. Everything was acceptable there. Why? Because there's no reference. There's no culture. There's no history. Dubai is a city that has grown like Las Vegas, but in a Middle East uh, method and formula. So we got this uh, demand, this commission to design a building that represents a new development company. And it should have a hotel and offices. So again, how can inspire, how can we seduce our client that in this case was a sheikh, was one of the emirs over there. So we said, let's use the corals. Let's study the forms of the corals in the sea. So we saw that one of the corals has this beautiful pattern that ramifications, and the other one on the other side was like two tubes that they were playing each other, kissing each other, and having a dialogue in the sea. So we applied this concept into the building with, of course, the program that all architects were obliged to apply in every building. The base, the podium, is the services and the commercial mall. So we implemented this skin of the coral into the facade, and we put in the top of the podium the two towers that are very gently moving to each other and even dancing. The result is this. The client was surprised. He was impressed. After two weeks arrived the crisis. So we have to went back home with the idea. But at the end, the most important thing as, is that we inspire him. And he was seduced by the idea. And we saw how his eyes were blinking when we were presenting the idea to him. That for us was our most important satisfaction. Also, trying to apply the concept of the colors of the corals into the facade, we implemented a photovoltaic panels in the facade to get as much more energy of sun that in Dubai there's plenty of that, and create the LEDs system with illumination into the tower. And the last examples I want to share with you is our, one of the most iconic periods we hope that we're going to build in Algeria. This period is very complex because it's 100,000 square meters of construction with a podium with a commercial mall, banquet hall, commercial mall, hotel, and apartments. It's a very uh, strategic lo location with a lot of highways. So we thought, why not we can do a building that represents the roads of the desert and the movements of the roads of the desert. Not only that, the name of the location is called the Big Winds. So we thought, why not to create a big cruise, a big transatlantic boat that is launching or used to be a platform for Algeria for the future. So the result is this big building that represents a big boat with movements in every single slab, like the rose of the desert, and with a central spine core that articulates the whole building. The project was approved by the Minister of Tourism, declared project of national interest, and we hope that we will see it built. Also, we were requested by an important magazine of Middle East to be part of the cover of the magazine. So this is the building in the magazine. So at the end, my idea that I want to share with you is that we believe that beauty lies in the fusion of nature and architecture. 
At the end, the concept is called arch nature. So you can see a wave that becomes a hotel. You can see the form of the waves in the sun that becomes a facade, that Peter is happy now. You can see a rock that becomes the facade of the building that merges into the landscape. And you can see a coral that becomes a building. Each of these projects has its own DNA, its own personality, its own soul. And this is the secret in design. So for us, design must seduce, shape, and the most important thing, evoke an emotional response, must inspire, must seduce. So incorporating natural life into architecture and design is a way to help us to be more close to our true nature. I personally believe the importance of surrounding ourselves with natural beauty, beauty to stay strong, stay happy, to stay healthy, not as individuals, as a society, as a whole. So I would like to end up the conference with a very important question to all of you. What if each of us changed the world? Thank you very much.